Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Joni, and today we're going to have some more stories from Reddit. But before we start it would be so much appreciated if you would subscribe to my channel, like the video if you enjoy it, and maybe leave a comment down below. These simple clicks would mean a lot to the future of this channel and really reward the effort that I put in every day. And now, without further ado, let's go. Part 2 We're now in November, and I have not changed my behavior. In fact, I have ramped it up. This is where my friend Nina comes into play. For context, Nina and Sue have never been what you call close. I met Nina freshman year of high school two years before I met Sue. Even way back then, Sue has seen Nina as a threat, as she's my closest female friend. There's always been an implied I don't trust her from Sue regarding Nina. She's never addressed it directly, but it's obvious to anyone who pays attention. Conversely, Nina's never been a big fan of Sue. Early in me and Sue's relationship, Nina called to attention to me how Sue was pretty much imposing herself into our little square of friends, whereas I did not do the same with Sue's set of friends. That irked Nina, because she knew why Sue was doing it. Among Sue's circle even now, there are no male friends aside from POS. Whereas Nina is the only girl in my square. Nina had been stuck overseas due to the virus, and finally returned to NYC November 3rd. Oz, Joey, and I decided we were gonna celebrate her return with a night at Joey's house for dinner and drinks. There was only five of us, Oz, Joey, Joey's wife who is also Nina's sister, Nina and myself. Sticking to CDC guidelines. We take the Rona very seriously. Nina, being the evil mastermind she is, comes up with an evil idea to trigger Sue. She suggested we take some photos in the same vein of the photos I discovered of Sue and POS months prior and post them to my FB. And that's just what we did. It wasn't until the 5th that Sue got wind of it, as I'm guessing a few friends noticed my updates and saw how uncomfortably close I was with Nina. This really messed her mind up, because she still believed I was cheating, and I can almost guarantee she wanted to accuse Nina. But she knew that Nina had been stuck in Europe for the majority of the year. Still did not stop her from attempting to dress me down that night for being so, as she said hand in the pics. I saw this as a golden opportunity to deliver the, the lead jab for my knockout blow. I say so what about the pics with you and POS from last year? He was pretty handsy in them, but did you see me get bent out of shape over it? Deer in headlights, it was the first time I even mentioned the dude's name throughout all of this. The hamster wheel in her head started reeling in real time, as she tried to explain away those pics. To that point she hadn't even known I saw them. That's little I use FB. When I actually do post something it's like an event to people, which is why the pics with Nina specifically got so much traction among our circles and explain away she did. He's that way with everyone. He's just a really friendly guy. I can see how it looks, but there's nothing there. I'm sorry if those pics hurt you. I will delete them. No, no, the pics aren't what hurt me. The year you've been sleeping with the dude was lying to me that you're working extra hours and hanging with friends is what hurt me. But vengeance, as Lieutenant Commander War from Star Trek, TNG so famously said it is a dish best served cold. From that night, Sue was being extra specially clingy and attentive to me. Like annoyingly so, she's tried to initiate affection and intimacy with me, and I would stonewall her at every chance. All the while, I'm still archiving everything she's saying to POS. Mind you, by this point I would long since go numb. Any desire I might have had to save my marriage was dead. I would check out the day I enacted the first phase of my plan. She's confiding in him that I have got worse. That she doesn't know what to do, and she feels like I absolutely hate her. I do. Then comes the bombshell. She says she can't see him anymore. The guilt is too much for her, and she feels like karma is suffocating her. She can't risk losing me. She says that she loves POS deeply, but she's still in love with me and she has to save her marriage before she loses me. No, my dear, you're about eight months too late for that. POS loses his temper, saying such lovely things as he doesn't love you the way I love you. And you're making a mistake. You can't just throw me away like this. That text chain would be the last they'd have until about three weeks ago. 
Throughout the remainder of November into December, Sue is stuck in limbo. She's trying to gauge where my headspace is and is still unable to tell if I am actually being unfaithful. Meanwhile, POS is steadily blowing her phone up daily, but she's not responding to him. I would see her check her phone often and quickly put it away. Meanwhile, phase two of the plan was now officially complete. The divorce papers were done. I would found me a studio apartment in Co-op City. New Yorkers will know the area and signed a two-year lease on it. All of my money was in my personal account. I was ready to throw my haymaker, so we're now at Thanksgiving. My oldest and his GF were hosting a small gathering of our immediate families. So them oldest and his GF, oldest GF parents, he's an only child myself, Sue and our youngest. We have a great night. My oldest GF is studying to be a chef, and she did all the cooking herself. The girl can cook, let me tell you. As I had to keep up appearances of nothing being wrong between Sue and I, I initiated affection with her several times that evening. Kisses on the cheek, cute little hugs. Wrapping my arms around her shoulders from behind. The gestures did not go unnoticed by her, as she reveled in it. Bear in mind, this was the first time I touched this woman since I kissed the top of her head the night she confronted me in October. So just about two months. Not gonna lie, I felt repulsed doing it, but I had to. I couldn't risk the plan, and me being distant to her in the face of my boys, my oldest GF and her parents would set off alarms. So my youngest decides he wants to stay over with his big bro for the night, so Sue and I head home. On the drive home, she thanks me for being so good to her, and says, I don't know what you're going through, baby, but I'm here for you. I had to hold off busting out in maniacal laughter again, and responded saying, I know, I just need time. So for the first time realistically since springtime, we had intimacy that night. I figured leave it, with what I'm about to do. May as well get some action before I delete her from my existence. I won't go into detail, but it wasn't lovemaking. When I was finished, she was a lump of flesh laying there trying to figure out the direction of the truck that ran her over. No cuddling or anything after. I just got up, showered, and, and went to go sleep in my office. To her confusion though, I used a protection. First time two decades I did. She was definitely perplexed by it, but she did not ask questions. Sure wasn't going raw on her knowing that she'd been doing so with POS for months at that point. I wake up the next day and check my handy dandy spy app, and for the first time in weeks, she responded to POS. Dude went full novella. He professed his love for her. Said she was wasting her time trying to rekindle a flame in me that died. That she'd been in a prison with me for 23 years and deserved to experience the love and affection of a man who would cherish her. Mind you, this dude is 27 years old. Five years older than our oldest son. And he's that sprung on a 45-year-old married mother of two. What a great A, high-quality simp. She chose to blow up our marriage and destroy the home we built for this dude. Pretty boy with a soft side. She responded saying pretty much the same thing she said when last they talked. That she loves him and enjoyed their time together. But she can't lose me. I'm still the love of her life. But she'll always have a place for him in her heart. That they can still be friends if he chooses, but the physical relationship between them is over. He begged her to see him one last time that week, and yep. You guessed it, she said yes. One more for the road, right? Who am I to say anything? That's what I did to her the previous night. Of course, I added all that to the archive I would compiled. December 4th is when phase three, the final phase of Operation Chanel by Ghost started. The divorce papers were in hand. My new place or residence was set up. Now I had to slowly start moving me stuff out of the house. But first, I had to break the news to my boys. I called my oldest to the house that Friday night, had them join me in my office, and laid everything on that table. Not the specifics, but that their mother had been cheating on me for over a year, and I was going to be filing for divorce soon. My 17-year-old was especially shaken up by this, because he himself had recently experienced his first taste of infidelity. Yep, his first GF had cheated on him just four months prior. 
Seeing his heart broken the second time at the idea that his own mother was capable of doing this hit him hard. My oldest took it a lot better and suggested taking his brother in to live with him until this blows over, to which I agreed. We packed up some of his stuff, and he asked me was I going to be okay. I told him, yes, son, I'm going to be alright, and so are you. We're going to be alright, I promise, and then they were off. The hardest part was now over, and it was now time to arm the nukes. Over the next few weeks, day by day Oz would help me get a little of my most sensitive stuff out of the house. Gave him a list of all of the definite stuff to grab while Sue and I were at work and left him the spare key. This was all stuff Sue wouldn't notice was missing unless you told her it was gone. I would also got a new phone and phone number and told everyone who needed to know Oz, Joey, Nina, my boys, Big Sis, and my mother my new contact info. Meanwhile, I'm keeping up the rows with Sue, and she's none the wiser. Trickling bits and pieces of affection to her just to keep her off of the trail, while she's still in contact with POS. Not to the extent that they'd been prior, but there's still an emotional thing happening. The fog is faint, but it's still there. All the while, I gather everything, and I do mean everything. Every bit of data I have archived since I started the plan, call logs, text, pics, emails, everything, and start making printouts. Folks, I must have spent over a $1,500 on staple supplies. Printer ink, paper, binders, the works. And I cataloged everything in order from the beginning of the affair until that last bit two weeks ago, December 16th in the binders. 14 of them. I then put each one in a box and gift wrapped each, addressing them to various people. My mother, my father passed seven years ago, her parents, her two sister, her brother, her HR department. Did I forget to mention POS works for the same company? And there's an express rule against inter-company relationships because of the nature of what she does. Several of her friends, POS and POS parents, lugged all of those stuffs to the post office and shipped them all out December 16th. Edit to add for delivery, December 22 to 24th. Perfect. So we're now at Christmas Eve. Sue comes home around the usual time. No idea if she'd seen POS. I would stop tracking her on the app the 18th. Figure I would gotten all the mileage I needed from it. As per usual, she showers, hangs out with me a bit. I blow her back out on the living room couch. I know I'm a stupid and she turns in for the night. The final phase was upon me at long last. The new guy would been arming since June was finally about to launch. In the middle of the night, I woke up and wrapped one of the three remaining binders with the divorce papers taped to the inside cover and set it on my side of the bed with a note note that said, Merry Christmas on it. Next to it, I left my old phone and the business card of my lawyer. I packed up the remainder of my most needed items, enough to fill two backpacks, and I left my home that I spent 23 years in for the last time. That, my friends, was one week ago. To Sue, I am completely off the grid. Gone. Shadow ghosted. She's blocked on FB, but still hasn't blocked me for some reason, so I'm keeping tabs on the fallout. It's absolutely glorious. My packages have reached everyone I sent them out to, and Sue is getting crucified. Her youngest sister completely dressed her down. Both of her parents have condemned her. My mom absolutely destroyed her. Like, I know my mom has a mean streak, but the things she called Sue were crazy. She's been frantically trying to find out if anyone knows where I am, but those that do, aren't saying a word. All over her FB feed she's desperately trying to reach me, because I'm guessing she knows I'm likely looking. But I'm not saying a word to her without my lawyer present. That'll be the next time I share oxygen with her. She's got no way of spinning the narrative to paint me as the bad guy, because I have exposed her to everyone who matters to her. And from what a mutual friend who works in the same company as her, she and POS apparently are being put on administrative leave as of tomorrow. So yay, chances are she'll be going into 2021 unemployed. As for the, the final two binders, well, one has been turned over to my lawyer as my final bit of evidence for my impending divorce, and the last one I put in my storage unit to be burned in Joey's fire pit when the divorce is final. Do I feel guilty about this? No, 
Not even in the slightest. 23 years I did right by this woman. I gave her the home she wanted. I gave her the family she wanted. I gave her the life I felt we both deserved, and I loved her unconditionally. Never have I faltered. Never have I strayed. Never have I even entertained the notion of breaking my vows. When an issue came up that I felt was affecting our marriage, I came to her and told her, and we sorted it out as best we could. She opted to find comfort in another man's bed. Rather than come to me and say she was unhappy with our life at the time, she decided to step out with a young punk who gave her the tingles. So no, I have no sympathy for what I did or for her. She can burn in hell for all I care. The most I stand to lose is my house, a car, and maybe a couple hundred bucks a month in alimony. But seeing as the divorce is filed under the statute of adultery and Anne Wise is at fault, that might get waived with the insurmountable amount of evidence I have provided. As far as I'm concerned, she's dead to me, and I am never looking back. Edit and Wyas is not fully at fault. Under certain circumstances, a divorce can be filed at fault, of which my lawyer has informed me my case falls under. I will be meeting the soon-to-be ex-wife with her lawyer tomorrow. I'm guessing I will just update here.